let me welcome you to this lecture in the last lecture we found out the or uh, we identified the symmetry operations present in tetrahedron and we found that there are total 24 symmetry operations in a tetrahedral molecule now let us uh, go ahead and discuss about the octahedral uh, molecule or well, let us try to identify the symmetry operations that are present in a octahedral molecule now in an octahedral, uh, there are total 48 symmetry operations uh, present and in the first look, it may appear that uh, to be a very daunting task to find out all uh, symmetry operation in an octahedral molecule, but then if we draw it octahedron in a proper way, then it is not very difficult to identify the symmetry elements as well as, you know, to find out the symmetry operations. So let us try to do that. And we will first draw the octahedral molecule. That is, we can we can take a metal complex, octahedral metal complex. We can draw it in this way. And then try to identify the symmetry operations. In this way. So, this is one way of drawing the octahedron, and it is easy to visualize certain symmetry operations when we draw the octahedron, octahedron in this way. Another way to draw is the polyhedral structure, or where the triangular faces of octahedron are visible. There are total eight triangular phases in an octahedron, that's why we call it octahedron. So this is how we can draw and we can give a 3D appearance by drawing it in this fashion so that this edge is towards us while this particular uh, corner of the uh, of the head and is behind us in this picture. So let us now try to identify the 48 symmetry operations in of the head and, and uh, we will begin with proper axis of symmetry and when we look at this picture uh, it is easy to identify or it is easy to uh, you know, visualize that there is one a C4 axis of symmetry in the octahedral molecule that it passes through this ligand over here and that is the uh, apical ligand and the metal and then again the apical ligand at the bottom so one axis that passes through these three atoms this is a C4 axis of symmetry now what we should Question is because the uh, like in case of tetrahedron, we have seen that in case of tetrahedral molecule like methane, all hydrogen atoms are equivalent. So here also we should question whether if all the ligands here in octahedron are also equivalent to each other or uh, not. And if in that case, if it, they are equivalent, then there will be more C4 axis of symmetry in an uh, octahedral molecule. And it is easy to visualize this if we look at this particular picture, let us level these positions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Let us level the corners as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 Then it is easy to visualize these uh, C4 axis of, uh, axis, of, axis of symmetry that are present in the header. Now the, the first axis that we have already visualized passes through position 1 over here and the metal which is at the uh, center of the octahedron uh, lies over here in this equatorial plane of containing two atom 2, 3, 4, 5 over here and then it also passes through position 6 so it goes through 1, M and then 6 so this is one C4 axis that we have found. Now this C4 axis we note that it passes through the uh, two of this axial position and the center of the of the head run. Now if we consider what we can do is that we can consider any two 
opposite corners of the octahedron as the axial position. When we consider one, position 1 and position 6 as the axial posi positions, what happens is that the plane containing 2, 3, 4, 5 is the equatorial plane. If we do consider that position 2 and 4, which are uh, opposite corners of the octahedron, as the axial position, then you will realize that this plane containing position 1, 3, 6, and 5, this plane now will behave as the equatorial plane. So when these two points are the axial positions, the equatorial plane is 1, 3, 6, 5, and you can visualize this plane easily if you look at this picture. That is 1, 3, 6, 5 plane is the equatorial plane. So another C4 axis will also pass through the position 4 and 2, and it will also go through again the metal, which is at the central position of the octahedron. So we have another C4 axis of symmetry. Then finally, if we consider the remaining two uh, positions, opposite corners of the octahedron, that is uh, 3 and then corner 5. And then if we pass an axis through these two uh, corners, that is passing through 3, M and then 5, then again what we will realize is that the equatorial plane will be defined by position 1, 2, 6 and 4, while axial positions will be defined by position 3 and then 5. So again if you look at these two positions as the axial position, that is 3 and 5 as the axial, then you will realize that this, these four points 1, 2, 6, and 4 define the equatorial plane. So this is how we have seen that all the corners, through all the opposite corners uh, of the octahedron, this uh, C4 axis of symmetry can be uh, visualized. And in total, there are eight, uh, uh, six, uh, uh, six corners in the octahedron, and uh, there we have three opposite corners in the octahedron and therefore we have a three different C4 axis of symmetry passing through opposite corners of the octahedron. So the total there are three C4 axis of symmetry in the octahedron. So let us first, before we go ahead, let us first count the identity element. So one operation, that is the identity operation, and now we have three C4 axes are present in the axis of symmetry are present in the octahedron we have seen. And each of these C4 axes of symmetry produces C4 1, C4 2, C4 3, C4 4. When we do this, that is 1 into 2 pi by 4 degree rotation. So this is C4 1 rotation. This is 2 into 2 pi by 4. So this is going to be equal to 2 pi by 2 degree rotation or a C2 rotation. And then C4, 3, if we try to simplify again, this is, sorry, this will remain as C4, 3. And C4, 4, we will find out is to be equal to identity as it essentially means rotation of 360 degree with respect to that axis. So now what we have seen is that once we have a C4 axis of symmetry, collinear to the C4 axis of symmetry, we will also have a C2 axis of symmetry in the molecule. So uh, uh, apart from the C4 axis of symmetry, uh, apart from the three C4 axis of symmetry, there are three C2 axis of symmetry also there in, in the octahedron. And these C2 axis of symmetry are collinear to the C4 axis of symmetry. So, also what we have seen is that each of these C4 produces two distinct symmetry operations. So, three C4 axis of symmetry is going to produce total six C4 operations. And apart from that, we have already identified that there are going to be three C2 axis of symmetry, three C2 axis, and these C2 axis are essentially coming from the C4 2 
uh, symmetry of relation, and that is why we should distinguish them. And these all of these C two axis produces one one symmetry of relation. So total we have three C two of relations. So apart from the C four axis of symmetry through the axial positions, we have seen a C uh, through each of these opposite uh, corners of the octahedron, a C two axis of symmetry is also uh, passes through. So this is the these are the C two axis, and this is what we have. You know, we have determined the number of symmetry operations generated by the C four axis as well as the C two axis of symmetry. Now let us. Uh, Find out if there are other proper axes of symmetry in the octahedral molecule or not. And if we look carefully again here, what we will realize is, even from whether from this picture or as from this picture, it is easy to visualize that apart from these C2 axes of symmetry, there are other C2 axes of symmetry which are also present in the octahedron. That is, these uh, C2 axes of symmetry, if we consider uh, the the equatorial plane over here, and an axis which does not go pass through the ligands but only bisect the equatorial plane over here. So this the axis passes through the uh, metal center only here and does not go through the uh, ligands. In that case, again, this is a a C2 axis of symmetry we see that 180 degree rotation will essentially bring us to indistinguishable configuration here as well. So these C2 axis of symmetry bisects an equatorial plane. According, uh, apart from these C2 axis of symmetry in this way, we can also bisect the equatorial plane uh, in this fashion here. See this way if we bisect by using Another axis uh, which bisects the equatorial plane over here uh, in this in this fashion, then this is also going to be a C2 axis of symmetry. So for each of these, uh, or bisecting each of the equatorial plane of symmetry in the octahedron, there are two uh, C2 axis of uh, symmetry. So here in this picture as well, we can visualize this. So first. The, 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 the equatorial, let us consider the equatorial plane 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, bisecting this equatorial plane, uh, passing through the position, uh, bisecting position 4 and 5, as well as 2 and 3. So, the axis that we are talking about now bisects position 4 and 5 in this way and passes through the metal over here and goes out in this way. This is one of the C2 axis and then again it also bisects 3, 4 so in this way when it goes out as well as 2, 5 then the edge defined by position 3 and 4 and also the edge defined by 2 and 5 are being bisected by this C2 axis of symmetry. So this is how we have seen that each of the equatorial plane uh, contain two additional uh, C2 axis of symmetry which bisect the equatorial planes. Now we have already uh, discussed that there are total three equatorial planes in the octahedral molecule because while finding out the C4 axis of symmetry we have seen that uh, we can each of the opposite pair of these uh, opposite corners of the octahedron essentially can be considered as axial position. In, in that case, when we do so, uh, we see that there are three different equatorial planes in the octahedron. That is, the plane defined by position 2, 3, 4, 5, as well as the plane, uh, another plane is defined by 1, 3, 6, 5, and finally we have also seen 1, 2, uh, 6, 4 also defines another equatorial plane. So these are the different equatorial planes in the octahedral molecule, and we have also seen that each of 
Bisecting each of these equatorial plane, there is this, there are two C2 axis of symmetry. So there are total six C2 axis of symmetry present in the octahedron apart from these three C2 axis of symmetry which are present or which are collinear to the C4 axis of symmetry. So these C2 axis of symmetry are different and this, the, these are not collinear to the C4 axis of symmetry. So then we have again six C2 operations are generated by these six uh, C2 axis of symmetry. So now we have found several proper axes of symmetry in the octahedron and we may feel that there are no other proper axes of symmetry in the octahedron and we will be wrong if we do so because apart from these proper axes of symmetry we also have C3 axis of symmetry in the octahedron though when we look at the octahedron in this way it is difficult to visualize the C3 axis of symmetry but the octahedron or for that purpose any uh, any any ge geometrical uh, shapes or any Archimedean solids uh, which contain these triangular faces we should always question uh, whether C3 axis of symmetry are present or not because it, these hadron means essentially the tri uh, triangular faces and octahedron means there are eight triangular faces in it and it, a triangular face in a triangular face we can have C3 axis of symmetry. Now the question is how the C3 axis of symmetry are positioned in the octahedron or how we can visualize this C3 axis of symmetry in the octahedron and the second question that we ask, should ask is how many such C3 axis of symmetry are present in an octahedron and in order to do so, in order to visualize the uh, C3 axis of symmetry in an octahedron what we should do is that we should try to look at or we should try to visualize the octahedron uh, through these triangular faces. So what we will do is that we will redraw the octahedron, but now what we will do is that we will uh, visualize the octahedron through these triangular faces. So let us do one thing, that is let us try to look at the octahedron uh, from along this one, two, three triangular face. So when we position ourselves in such a way that we, we look at, you know, we look at uh, these triangular face one, two and three. So what is going to be visible to us, this position 1, position 2, and then position 3. Now apart from these uh, three positions, 1, 2, and 3, we will, what, we will be, what will be visible to us apart from this triangular face defined by position 1, 2, and 3, what else is going to be visible to us is another triangular face or the corner of uh, this particular triangular face defined by position 4, 5 and 6 are going to be visible to us only because this, this particular plane is behind this triangular face so when we position ourselves or our eye along this direction over here this not and not this entire triangular face is going to be visible because it will be covered by this triangular face 1, 2, 3 uh, but the corners of this triangular face defined by position 4, 5 and 6 are going to be visible to us. So what is going to be visible, we can draw over here because this triangular face is positioned in this fashion over here. So this is going to be our position 6 which is at the bottom. So it will be visible below uh, the, 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 the edge 2 and 3. So that is what the edge 2 and 3 is present and below it uh, we will have the position or the corner of the triangle uh, that is position 6 is going to be visible over here and 5 is going to be over here and then 4 is going to be over here so this is what is going to be visible to us so we will essentially visualize when we look along this direction through this triangular face we will essentially be looking at two different triangular faces of the octahedron are going to be visible 
the top triangular face, entire triangular face is going to be visible, 1, 2, 3, and for the bottom triangular face, only the corners are going to be visible, and that's why we have drawn position 4, 5, and 6, if I the bottom triangular face over here. So now it is easy to visualize the C3 axis of symmetry because through it, this axis, the C3 axis of symmetry, passes through the center of these uh, two opposite triangular faces essentially. So this, because this 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6 are defines two opposite triangular faces of the octahedron and through the center of these two opposite triangular faces of the octahedron we have a C3 axis of symmetry. So what we can do is that we can draw this C3 axis of symmetry in the octahedron in this way. So it passes through the center of this triangular face 1, 2, 3 and then it goes out to the center of the opposite triangular face in this fashion and in that process it also passes through the say metal which is going to be present in the uh, cent center of the octahedron. So this is how the C3 axis of symmetry is going to be there and what we can do is that we can also do a C3-1 operation and then see what happens when we uh, do a C31 operation whether we arrive at indistinguishable configuration or not. That is, sorry, when we do 120 degree rotation, so we will have the top triangle here again and the bottom triangle is going to be there. And the positions, if we do rotation, in this fashion, with respect to the axis, which is perpendicular to the plane of the board, if we consider that these two planes, triangular uh, faces, are essentially parallel to the plane of the board, then uh, the C3 axis is going to be perpendicular to the plane of the board. And when we do rotation in clockwise fashion here, this 3 will come to the position of 1, 1 is going to be here, and 2 is going to be over here, while 4 will go to the position of 5. 5 will be here and then 6 is going to be here. So what we see is that we have arrived at indistinguishable configuration when we do C3 operation with respect to this axis which is perpendicular to the uh, triangular faces and passes through the center of the triangular faces over here in this fashion. So what we have done is we have identified one C3 axis of symmetry in the octahedron. Now what we, if we look at the octahedron carefully we will be able to visualize that there are total eight octa uh, triangular faces in the octahedron, and these uh, these eight faces are essentially facing uh, opposite to each other. So there are total four opposite pairs of triangular faces in the octahedron, and through these center of these four sets of triangular faces, uh, we have total four C three axis of uh, symmetry passing through. So that is, you can take, you can number the triangular faces over here. So we have already identified the uh, the C3 axis passing through the triangular face, center of triangular face 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5, 6. Similarly, if we take the triangular face 1, 3, 4, then the opposite triangular face is going to be 2, 5, and 6. And if we take 1, 4, 5, the opposite triangular face is going to be 2, 3, 6. And finally, if we take 1, 2, 5, then the opposite triangular face is going to be 3, 4, 6. So the center of uh, through the center of all these uh, opposite triangular faces, we have total 4 C3 axis of symmetry in the octahedral molecule. And we have total four C3 axes are present in an octahedron. Now we already know that this C3 ax, each of these C3 axes of symmetry produces two symmet distinct symmetry operations, that is the C3-1 and C3-2. And because there are four C3 axes of symmetry, each C3 produces two symmetry operations. So total we have eight C3 operations are present in the octahedral molecule. So we have now 
identified all the proper axes of symmetry in the octahedral molecule as well as we have also uh, noted all the symmetry operations that are generated by these uh, proper axis of symmetry in the octahedral molecule. So, let us now try to identify other elements of symmetry in the octahedral molecule and what we will do is that we will now try to identify if there are any improper axis of symmetry present in the octahedral molecule. So, since there are C4 axis of symmetry over here in this uh, molecule, we, uh, through the C4 axis of symmetry, we also have S4 axis of symmetry because we can also do S4, C4 rotation and then if when we do sigma uh, perpendicular to the C4 rotations, we will arrive at indistinguishable configurations. So, apart from the C4 axis of symmetry, we also have S4 axis of symmetry and these S4 axis of symmetry are collinear to the C4 axis of symmetry. So, since there are three C4 axis of symmetry, collinear to these three C4 axis of symmetry or passing through opposite corners of the uh, octahedron, there are total three S4 axis of symmetry in the octahedron and each of these S4 axis of symmetry we know produces S41 which will remain as S41, S42 uh, when we do S41 will give us S41 only, S42 is C42 sigma 2 and C42 when we do we find that it is equal to uh, C2. So, we have already accounted for this particular symmetry operation because this symmetry operation is generated by C2 axis of symmetry which is collinear to the S4 axis and because we know that S4 is also collinear to the C4, essentially we are talking about these C2 axis of symmetry which are collinear to the C4 as well as S4 axis of symmetry and this is also when we do S42 operation, we uh, arrive at this C2 operation which is generated by these C2 axis of symmetry. So, we do not have to account for or do not have to uh, count these symmetry operations once again because these have been already accounted for over here and then uh, we have S4 uh, 3 which is going to be equal to C4 3 and sigma 3 which is essentially be S4 3 only and S4 4 we will find it to be equal to identity. So, S4 axis of symmetry produces two distinct symmetry operations S41 and S43. So, because there are three S4 axis of symmetry, so total we have six S4 operations. Six S4 operations are present in the octahedral molecule. So, apart from the S4 axis of symmetry, because uh, we have C3 axis of symmetry, we should uh, question whether we have uh, we have uh, S2n axis of symmetry with respect to this or coordinate to this uh, C3 axis of symmetry or not and through these triangular phases because we have already done for C3 axis of symmetry we have drawn it in this way that is triangle 1 to 3 1 2 3 and the opposite triangular phase we have drawn is five, four, and six in this way. So we have already identified the C3 axis of symmetry passing through the center of these opposite triangular faces in octahedron. Now along the or collinear to the C3 axis of symmetry, if we do a C6 operation, we do not have a C6 axis of symmetry here. When we do 60 degree rotation, we will not arrive at indistinguishable configuration, but the configuration is going to be distinguishable because when we do 60 degree rotation, this one will reach somewhere over here. So, this is where is 1 and this is 2 and this is 3, while 4 will reach somewhere over here. So, this is Four, five, and six. So what we have seen is the position of the 
top triangle and the position of the bottom triangle have changed and the final configuration over here is distinguishable from the configuration, initial configuration over here. So that is why the, we do not have a C6 axis of symmetry in an octahedron. But when we do sigma perpendicular to the, with respect to a plane perpendicular to this uh, axis to which we have done the C6 operation, that is this particular plane of uh, plane must be parallel to the two triangular faces over here because the axis through which we did C6 operation is perpendicular to the uh, triangular faces and the sigma must be parallel to the again uh, these triangular faces but this sigma is sandwiched between the top triangular face over here and the bottom triangular face uh, uh, which is behind us. So when we do so, when we do reflection with respect to such a plane, the top triangular face will go to the position of the bottom triangular face and the bottom triangular face will come up over here. So now when we draw the configuration, the bottom triangular face will come up and the top triangular face will go down once we do the reflection. So position 1 is going to be now defined, it will be the, you know, in the bottom triangular face, 1, 2 and 3 will define the bottom triangular face while Position 4, 5 and 6 will define the top triangular face. So what we have seen in this way is that now this configuration is uh, indistinguishable from the initial configuration over here. So the combination of C6 and sigma perpendicular to the, uh, when we do reflection with respect to a plane which is perpendicular to the axis uh, through which we did, the way, with respect to which we did the C6 operation essentially, we arrive at indistinguishable configuration and we have an S6 axis of symmetry and what we have done is a S6-1 operation over here. So collinear to the C3 axis of symmetry, we have seen there is a S6 axis of symmetry and since there are four C3 axis of symmetry in the octahedron and these four C3 axis of symmetry we have already discussed passes through the center of opposite triangular faces of the octahedron there are eight opposite faces so eight total eight triangular faces and there the, we have four pairs of opposite triangular faces in the octahed, octahedron and therefore we have total four uh, c3 axis of symmetry which passes through the center of these opposite triangular faces and collinear to these c3 axis of symmetry we have s6 axis of symmetry so this also means that we have total four S6 axis of symmetry are present in the octahedron and these S6 axis of symmetry are collinear to the C3 axis of symmetry and these S6 axis of symmetry passes through the center of the opposite triangular faces in the octahedron once again. Now let us find out how many symmetry operations are generated by the S6 as axis of symmetry because we have even order improper axis of symmetry so we will have we will have to go up to S66 which is going to be equal to identity so this is going to remain as S61 while S62 is going to be C3 uh, sorry C62 sigma 2 C62 is going to be equal to 2 into 2 pi by 6 rotation, sigma 2 is going to be identity we know and so when we do this, this is going to be 2 pi by 3, so this is C31 operation. So this S62 gives us C31 and also tells us that there is a C3 axis collinear to the S6 axis of symmetry which we have already discussed that the C3 is collinear to the S6. Now S63 is going to be equal to C63 and sigma 3. C63 is going to be 3 into 2 pi by 6 and then we also have the, the, the 3 into 2 pi by 6 degree rotation and then sigma 3 is going to be equal to sigma. So this is going to be equal to 2 pi by 2 degree rotation which is we will have C2 sigma over here and that is why we have a S2 symmetry operation and we have already discussed that S2 is equal to inversion or this doing inversion operation and doing S2 operation are 
equivalent to each other. So along with the S6 axis of symmetry, when we do S6 tree operation, we see that we arrive at inversion operation. So there must be a center of symmetry in the octahedron, and this center of symmetry will lie at the position where the uh, the axis with respect to which we, we did the C6 operation uh, by you know meets the or passes through the uh, through the uh, plane with respect to which we did the uh, reflection operation or because the 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 C6 the axis through which we did C6 axis uh, C6 operation is collinear to C3 so it, it passes in this way through the octahedron and the sigma is perpendicular to the C6 uh, or axis through which we did a C6 operation. So this is the point where the C6 axis passes through the uh, plane with respect to which we have to do uh, reflection and this point is the uh, this is where the center of symmetry lies essentially the, the center of this uh, the center of this octahedral molecule we have a center of symmetry and we can find out the position of the center of symmetry by uh, looking at this particular aspect. So at the position of the metal we have a center of symmetry and it generates one symmetry operation only that is the inversion operation. So let us go ahead and then also find out uh, C4 uh, C6 4 sigma 4. So this will give us essentially C32, then S65 will remain as S65 and S66 is going to be identity. So S6 axis of symmetry produces two symmetry operations, two distinct symmetry operations, and because there are four S6 uh, axis of symmetry, we have total eight S6 symmetry operations are present in the octahedron and let us also now count the symmetry operation generated by the center of symmetry that is one center of symmetry and one inversion operation is generated by the center of symmetry. So now we have found out all symmetry operations generated by proper axis of symmetry, improper axis of symmetry as well as the uh, inversion uh, or center of uh, symmetry in the octahedral molecule. What is left only is to find out the symmetry operations generated by the plane of symmetry. If there are any plane of symmetry in the octahedral molecule, that is what we need to find. So we have already found three different equatorial planes of uh, planes of symmetry in the octahedral molecule while finding out the or while identifying the uh, C4 axis of symmetry or the C2 axis which are collinear to the uh, C4 axis or the S4 axis of symmetry, we define three equatorial planes in the octahedron and these are uh, symmetry planes and we uh, denote these planes of symmetry or the equatorial planes of symmetry as horizontal planes and we don't denote these planes as sigma H why we call them as horizontal because these planes of symmetry are perpendicular to the proper axis of symmetry of highest order and that is the reason whenever the any plane of symmetry is perpendicular to the proper axis of symmetry of highest order in a molecule we they denote this uh, plane of symmetry as sigma h and in case of octahedron these equatorial planes are perpendicular to the c4 axis of symmetry which is the proper axis of symmetry of highest order in the octahedron and that is why we define these three equatorial planes as horizontal planes of symmetry or as sigma with subscript h over here. We have three such planes of symmetry and each of these plane of symmetry we know produces one symmetry operation, one reflection operation. So total three sigma h planes will produce three sigma h operations. Now, uh, we should ask this question whether there are any other plane of symmetry in the octahedral molecule and yes, there are other planes of symmetry and these plane of symmetry, uh, the horizontal plane of symmetry we see uh, contains four uh, ligands or four corners of the, uh, can be, are defined by four corners of the octahedron. Now, there are other planes of symmetry which bisect the edges of the octahedron. 
So if we take the edges, the opposite edges of the octahedron, so let us take the edge 2, 3 and let us also take the opposite edge that is 4, 5, defined by 4, 5. So when we consider a plane which bisects these two uh, edges and also passes through these two positions 1 and 6 as well as through the center of symmetry of the metal which is at the center of the uh, octahedral molecule, that is going to be another plane of symmetry and this plane of symmetry is not a horizontal plane of symmetry we see because this plane of symmetry is parallel to the uh, to the, to the proper axis of symmetry of highest order that is the C4 axis of symmetry and it contains the C4 axis of symmetry in fact. So we are talking about uh, the plane of symmetry which passes through the position 1, position 6 as well as the uh, center of symmetry at the center of the octahedron and this plane of symmetry also bisects the opposite edges 2, 3 and 4, 5 in this position over here. So we have another we can have another plane of symmetry which passes through or which bisects the opposite edges 3 defined by 3 4 and uh, 2 5 and again this plane of symmetry also passes through the position 1 and 6 and the metal at the center so this is another plane of symmetry so what we see is that these plane of symmetry essentially bisects the equatorial plane defined by the position 2, 3, 4, 5. So both of these two planes which bisects the opposite edges over here essentially bisects the equatorial plane defined by position 2, 3, 4, 5. So as we have seen these C's two axis of symmetry there are six C2 axis of symmetry these six C2 axis of symmetry also bisects the equatorial planes and since there are total six equatorial planes these plane of symmetry which bisects the equatorial planes there are total six such uh, plane of symmetry which bisects these equatorial planes because there are three equatorial planes bisecting these three equatorial planes uh, each of these three equatorial planes there are two such uh, planes and these plane of symmetry these are not perpendicular to the proper axis of symmetry of highest order and we define these plane of symmetry as sigma d plane with subscript d which is known as diagonal plane of symmetry and we will discuss about why we define them as sigma d in a later lecture but there are total six such as diagonal plane of symmetry we see bisecting each of these uh, each of these you know uh, horizontal plane of symmetry there are two uh, sigma dihedral planes of symmetry and total there are going to be that is why six such diagonal planes of symmetry and once you can visualize the equatorial planes bisecting these equatorial planes uh, you can visualize all the six uh, diagonal planes of symmetry and each of these diagonal plane of symmetry are again going to produce one symmetry operation and six diagonal plane of symmetry are going to produce total six symmetry operations. So we have now also identified all the plane of symmetry in the octahedral molecule. Let us find out how many total symmetry operations we have identified. Uh, so one identity operation, 6C4, that is 7 total, and then 3C2, collinear to the C4, total 10 over here, 16, 16 plus 8, we have 24, uh, uh, 24 over here. And then we have uh, 30 with 6 S4 when we count, 38, uh, 39, 39 plus 3 we have 42, 42 plus 6 we have 48 symmetry. Operations. So we have identified all 48 symmetry operations of the octahedron and we have identified all the elements of symmetry that are present in the octahedron only what we did is that we draw the octahedron in different fashion so that it is easy for us to visualize uh, different uh, symmetry operations it is important that we draw the octahedron in different uh, from different perspective or other way it is difficult to visualize certain uh, symmetry operations and what we have seen is that we have one identity element we have three c4 axis and collinear to these 
3c for axis, we have 3c to axis of symmetry as well as 3s for axis of symmetry. Then we have seen there are 6c to axis of symmetry which bisects the equatorial plane of symmetry as well as we have 4 C3 axis of symmetry. These 4 C3 axis of symmetry essentially passes through the center of opposite triangular faces in the octahedron. And collinear to the C3 axis of symmetry, we have also 4 S6 axis of symmetry, which also passes through the center of opposite triangular faces in the octahedron. We, apart from that, we have a center of symmetry. And then we also have 3 uh, horizontal planes of symmetry. And finally, we found that there are six diagonal plane of symmetry in the octahedron and this brings the count of symmetry operation to 48 and this is how we can find out all the symmetry operation in the octahedron. So this uh, brings us to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we will try to identify symmetry operations that are present in the icosahedron and I thank you very much for being with me during this lecture and I look forward to being with you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.